so since we've had a lot of people asking me particularly today about certain ships, I'll just do a quick rundown of, um, I think if you want to watch them or not, but I'm just doing this now, because we've had a lot of people asking questions about, like, coal ships. <clears throat> all of them. Top earners. Well, all you have to do is, if you're looking for top earners, you just do this. Enhanced. <clears throat> all you have to do is just do the enhanced, enhanced credit one right here. So you can click the coal option or you just do the increased income and then um, it says all of them better increased income. <laughs> so like if you're looking for a credit farmer that you can still get, uh, that's for coal. Well, technically right now you can get the growth again, but not for doubloons. You can get it for 1 million free xp if you go to the um uh tech tree area or you can get it for free xp you don't have to pay doubloons for it that's a really good credit farmer currently so these are like the only only credit farmers for for uh coal so for coal you got the marco polo z44 black nishishami iwami kirasar salsa karna and palmer um, if you're going specifically for credit farming, um, credit farming only, and I'm basing this off of, like, average skill level, um, average skill level here. I'm not going off of high skill level or low, like, if you're average, um, Iwami, Iwami could potentially be a good one, and this is for coal only and for doubloons um palmer could potentially be fun like if you want to do that one but you know a lot of people will be like oh my god it sucks but i actually enjoy playing palmer and it's not bad um if you're looking for a more of a high higher skill level farming credits could be kearsarge kearsarge a higher level ship um black is really easy to use but the problem is is that it's so expensive Tulsa is a, is pretty much has the about it has a little bit lower DPM than a Buffalo, so I would say just play Buffalo. But if you want enhanced credits, sure you can run it. You can run the same build you have for Buffalo onto a Tulsa. Like you you know how I play Salem Open Water. That's how I play the the Tulsa. Like same thing. Uh, Karna, you have to sit really far back. It has a very very bad reload. It's like. You have to literally, you can only farm with this ship. You can only farm with the Carnot. If you try to be aggressive with it, we all know French armor, you're dead. Like, you're dead. You try being aggressive, you're dead. It has, like, a 20-second reload or something like that, which is pretty, uh, stinky. Marco Polo, it's not that bad. Like, I'm not a super big fan of it. Um... Like, just treat it like a normal battleship, and you'll do fine. C-44, uh, never get that ship. Never, ever, ever get this ship. Never. Do not touch it. Do not touch that ship with a five-foot pole. Just, do, just don't touch that. Never touch that one. Just, just, don't, just don't touch it. Nope. 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 Guns are tear. It, it's pretty much... It, they try to make it a... Uh, they try to make a like a German torp boat where they try to make it like a German torp boat hybrid thing. Like it's weird, but you're supposed to focus more on torpedoes on that than guns. It's like it's 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 annoying. So yeah, I don't really like it too much. What's up there, Safe Free? How's it going? But I have videos on. Yeah, I have a vid I have videos on all of these ships, by the way. All of them. All of these ships I have videos on. All of them. I, th I think I do. Any uh, I should. should have videos on all of them. Anyway, uh, let's go back to coal. I'm just going to go back to just hard coal now. Now, um, let's go over tier 10 DDs first. So, uh, excuse me. As of right now, you can get four DDs. For uh, tier 10 coal, you can get the Kaba, the Alvaro, Marcel, Sherman. Um, the easiest to play by far is the Sherman. 
So if you're looking for just an easy, um, I already sent you the code, by the way, Delta. I don't know why you're sending me that. I don't know why you're sending me your in-game. Yeah, I don't know why you're sending me that. I don't need your game name. Um, but um, pretty much you, if Sherman, the Sherman is by far the easiest to the play. Um, the smoke play, good sap, good HE, very good, good hydro. Um, it's pretty much just a simple farming ship. Um, if you play it properly, you can hunt down DDs too as you want. Um, that's just that for the Sherman. Um, for the Elvero, um, I know the Elvero just came out. It's pretty much a hybrid. You can't play it as just a gumbo. You have to play it as partial torp bow and partial gumbo. Um, it has the same weakness as, if you guys have seen the Italian, uh, Regilo, the tier 10 DD, it has the same weakness as it's so big, it just sucks up all the damage that it eats, so it suffers from taking a lot of damage. So, even though it has a 6.2 kilometer concealment, the Alvaro, you want to play it as a hybrid. You don't want to play super aggressive, like, I'm gonna go hunt down DDs, you can't do that, you gotta play like a hybrid. Uh, so kind of like a gearing gearing kind of like a it, it, kind of like a massive um like the guns can do damage they can if you do it properly but the problem is if you see any engagements where you're fighting more than one ship you, you usually just want to back out you just want to focus more on torps um kaba is definitely a more higher skill level uh dd um, you can use the smoke or the heal as a personal preference. People will call you a bitch if you use smoke, but smoke is a perfectly viable strat if you want to use it. Um, it's a personal preference. Some days I want smoke, some days I want heal. It, it it's just whatever your play style is for the day. Um, but normally you you the the torp the torpedo range is really small for the ship, so you can't really rely on its torps. You're just relying on its guns. The Kaba does have extremely strong side armor on the side which makes it extremely tanky against other dds um so usually it will end up on top on most dd engagements so there's there's that one uh the marceau is my favorite it does have dfaa which is strong against cvs uh very maneuverable um it has this french saturation so pretty much when it when it takes a lot of damage over time, you pretty much it just takes less and less damage. It does suffer from a high detectability of seven point seven point seven no from uh, seven kilometers, but with its high speed and maneuverability, um, you can kind of use that to your advantage. I use it as a heavy DD hunting boat. Um. If you're looking to use it as a farming ship, it's better for you just to get a club bear. Club bears are better at long distance engagements, while um, the Marceau is better at closer range DD hunting engagements. But again, it comes down to personal preference and what you're looking for. Um, but yeah, the tier 9 DDs, don't touch that. The Black and Ushishimi come down to personal preference, but the Black does give you more... Um, gimmicks. It has a smoke and radar combo. While the she just has a super heal. Um, I would say just get the black because it's um, it's literally just it has a smoke radar gimmick which is really strong. It's just super expensive coal. So make sure you use your coupon if you're gonna do that. Um. Anyway, moving on. Let's go to cruisers. All right, so this list right here, the cruisers for coal, is going to come down to play styles and skill level, and it's it's going to come down to this per, uh, perfectly. Um, if you guys have watched how I play Salem, I play a very open water style of Salem. Now, you're technically not supposed to play it like that. You're supposed to play it by islands. But um, if you have a Des Moines, you don't really need a Salem. But I like Salem. It's fun. It's a nice crew trainer. So it's always nice to have a ship that you don't have to pay um, experience to transfer captain. So it's always nice. 
you can pretty much stick the exact same captain you have on a Des Moines onto a Salem. So you can level up your Des Moines captain if you're trying to do that. So there's that. Uh, Napoli is pretty much just as it's almost it's very tanky. It's not as tanky as a Petro in regard to that, but it's a very tanky, um, versatile uh, cruiser uh, with having the the, the uh, engine exhaust smoke. Uh, good guns. It has the sap secondaries. Um, it's usually sees more use in a ranked, uh, ranked environment or like clan battles when there's usually less ships. But normally they're not like Napoli's aren't like they can be used. But normally they take something like uh, in clan battles they normally take something like a Mosfa or something that has like a like a Neveski, something that has radar. So normally that they don't really take Napoli's um, for that. So there's that. Yoshino is a simple, like, I don't, like, it has a very, it has a similar play style to Sal. Long distance HE farming. Um, it does have very strong AP guns that a lot of people underestimate, including myself. You, it can just dev strike cruisers. You know how, like, Stalingrad has those dev strike guns with those white people out? Uh, Yoshino has the same thing, but people just, but it doesn't, okay, it's not the same thing. Stalingrad is, of course, better, but the Yoshino is close to it on its, like, knockout ability with, the um, with the guns. <clears throat> nothing, a no cruiser has as good guns as a Stalingrad. Nothing, nothing in the game does. Stalingrad has the, just the hardest hitting and best pitting, uh, uh, best, like, pitting guns besides the Petro, of course. The Petro can Citadel battleships from freaking... 16 kilometers away which is complete bullshit but whatever let's move on from that uh Bosfa, we're going over coal ships at the moment so Bosfa is currently um Bosfa is definitely a higher skill level ship a lot of people have issues playing her either they'll play it bow in which is one way you can do it or you can play it in a kiting angle but the problem is is that a lot of people don't know when to um and i said cruiser not battleship so no so you're good boss boss is a higher skill level cruiser because if you show any of your broadside at all you're literally just going to get farmed to everything you're you're done if you show your broadside so there's that so you definitely need to be careful in that regard if you try to play it I enjoy playing Masa, but I don't like playing the bow in play style. I enjoy playing more the kiting play style with the Masa because it's almost impossible for them to Citadel if you do it properly, and you can use all of your guns. And it's the Slav. The, the, sorry, the Masa is super accurate. Oh, you can also get the unique upgrade for the Masa. I forgot about that. You can get the unique upgrade for it, which is pretty good for the Masa. Makes it even more accurate, which is really nice. Uh, the only tier 10 coal ship battleship is the Kerr first. Um, a lot of people aren't going to like it, what I say, which is fine. But if you guys have noticed, when I play Kerr first in ranked, it does pretty good if you do it properly. And the main reason is, it's just a, literally a giant HP pool. And it, it's somewhat tanky. And you can just W down a lane, or you can hold the lane, and they, it's gonna be, it's hard for them to push you. That's, like, the main thing. If you're looking to get a battleship tier 9, like a coal battleship, if you're looking to get a coal one, um, if you're an average player, if you're, like, average level, average level um if you want secondaries <sighs> Ooh, this is actually kind of tough this is actually kind of tough to pick because this all comes down to like, this all comes down to skill level because how i'm how i'm considering it um how i'm considering is palmern a lot of average players will have the trouble being overly aggressive in palmern and dying they'll be over they'll be overly aggressive and dying they'll be dead they over push and they die. While with Awami, 
um, people wouldn't don't know how to utilize their torps effectively because you want me gets 20 kilometer torps. And if you're on a flank where you're able to kite and just sit there and reverse into the enemy, and then if they push, you can then like you can launch torps during the whole cycle over and over and over again. You can just like just mess with them so hard with the Awami's torps. Also, Awami has small. I believe it has a small superstructure. I don't. I'm trying to see if I can. It doesn't have a super large superstructure, so it's harder for them to hit you. It is a smaller superstructure, so you don't take as much HE damage. Um, Cure Sarge is by far the highest skill level. Um, probably the best coal ship, coal battleship at the moment. Um, and that's mostly due to how high of a skill level ship she is. Normal people. Average players or level players aren't going to be able to utilize her effectively. One of the best um, reasons why she's the best, one, the guns are absolutely devastating. Super accurate, strong guns. Um, even though it does have this ugly top here, if you angle properly, um, it's, it's very hard for them to effectively do damage to you there. If you angle properly, like if you're pretty much, if you're able to shoot all four guns and you stay at that angle, it's very hard for them to uh, kill you. Uh, one of the main problems of the ship, though, since it's so massive, it's very easy for you to be overly aggressive, even for a little bit, and you're dead. And that's why I don't really recommend it that much, because it's a higher skill level ship. Um, another reason why it's so good is because it does have the attack fighters. Now, the best purpose of the attack fighters isn't to attack other battleships or anything. It's legit either to cause a cruiser to go broadside to it, or to perma spot a DD and then quickly go back to your ship and then shoot your gun. So you're providing your own spotting. Which is the most cheesiest thing to do ever, but it actually like I I haven't I haven't played it recently, but when I did, it was very common for me to perma spot a DD and just slap it. Like I would just do the attack uh attack sequence, quickly leave back to ship, do the attack uh, shoot the guns, and there you go. Super easy. So there's that. Um, there's only two, one CV for Cole, and this one's actually pretty good. The, the Emelin is actually it's one of the only CVs I play. The Emelin and the the Urn are the only CVs that I play in the game. Um, if that just showcases like how much fun it is, I love playing it. It's so much fun. Um. Flint's really good. Flint's still very good with the smoke. With the smoke, very good with that. It's just really expensive. Uh, Lazo, um, I think the Lazo's okay. I don't really have too much bad memory of the ship. Yeah, for eighty three k coal, it's a pretty good deal. Um, cure off, not marble. Get cure off marble marble heads literally a floating citadel a uh, battleship tier seven duke of york um it has hydro which throws a lot of people off i also forget that this ship has hydro but yes it, it has hydro it, it's it throws people off that a lot of people don't know it has hydro and it and it throws me off sometimes because i forget it has hydro and then it'll rush up on me with hydro and get me perma spotted then i'm, I'm dead uh, let's see, tier 5, um, get Russian bias, get Russian bias, get Russian bias, that thing is so ridiculously tanky, it's stupid, it's literally a tier 5 Ismail, if you know how tanky it Ismail is, then you know this thing is tanky, that's literally what it is, Rio de Janeiro, if you pay money, you get a special horn, so, you get no anti-air. So, yeah. So, if you want a tier 5 battleship, uh, Russian Bias is uh, your go-to right there. Bakuika, that's okay. The boss of Wika isn't bad. But I'm not really a fan of grabbing these lower tier DDs. Okay, Agil, never mind. Agil's good. 
I forgot. A gill is actually pretty good. It's the only smoke, uh, it's the only smoke, uh, French DD. Forgot about that. That's why I, like, Kyrosard is such a good ship, but I can't just, I, I can't just tell people to get it because then you, you guys all, you guys all know what I'm talking about. You've seen, you see, you've all seen the Kyrosard players, right? They'll literally be at the back of the map. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You guys don't know what I'm talking about, right? I'm, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Kyrosard is at the back of the map, literally playing CB. They're not doing anything. They're literally nowhere. They're behind islands, or or they push and they're instantly dead. 90% of the time I see Kyrosard is at the back of the map, literally saying they're a CV, and they don't, they don't do anything. Like, uh, that's why I don't recommend Kyrosard. Like, I, to average players or lower level, I don't recommend it. If you have a, if you know how to play it properly, it's an amazing ship, and you can get tons of damage. It's a great ship as long as you have this the, the knowledge to play it. If you don't, then it's better to just wait. And when you get better and you understand the mechanic of it more, then you can go into it. But if you're just trying to jump in and play like any other battleship, you're, you're you can't. You can't. It, it, it has such a weird play style. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I gotta do a stream raider real quick and an ad break, too. So, um. Alright, so. <clears throat> Alright, so. We went over the coal ships. We're done with the coal ships. Alright, we went over all the coal ships, right? I believe we went over all of them. Yeah, we did. Okay. So, let's, let's go over steel. We will now go over steel ships. And we're just gonna keep doing this through all of them. Steel, coal, um doubloons and then research bureau so you guys can get a feel for whatever <clears throat> so as of right now the only um and this of course can change over time of course uh the only steel cv you can get is the fdr if you're a cv main which is nothing wrong with that if you like playing cvs uh fdr is by far one of the most dirty and op cvs in the game well until the united states came out and then that just completely washed out of the water um, but, uh, FDR is by far one of the most dirty tier 10 CVs currently out. Um, so if you want a CV you can make people suffer in, uh, FDR is definitely a good one to do it. Um, so there's that one. Uh, for the battleships, we have Shikoshima, Mecklenburg, and Comparable in Bergon. Um, for Shikoshima, um, it comes down to this, all right? Why would you get a Shikoshima? Like, if you're an average player, I can understand you wanting to get Shikoshima, right? But there's also a Satsuma, which is like a buffed, a buffed Shikoshima. There's like, a, there's a Satsuma, and you don't need to pay steel for that. So, you can get a Satsuma, you can get, a, it's pretty much the same thing as a Shiki, except uh, Satsuma has a funny button. But you will lose more credits playing a Satsuma than you will with a Shiki, so there's that. But <clears throat> my other my other case on why I usually don't like recommending this is why would you get a Shikoshima when you can get it incomparable? Same exact amount of guns. Um, incomparable is way more stealthy. It's technically 1,000 steel less. The main issue of the incomparable is the fact that it's a very high skill level ship. And that's the main issue. It's not tanky. It's not a tanky ship. It's just a higher skill level ship. But normally, if you're getting steel, if you have steel, then you have some level of competence. If you are getting steel at a rate where you can get like two or three steel ships a year, then normally you have the competency to be able to play incomparable. Normally. Normally you would. Um, of course, that's with a coupon. Um, so that's kind of how I would recommend like... That's why I don't like recommending Shiki, but if you're an average player, I can see how you like it. But then there's incom incomparable, which is for like above average or decent, like good good players. Um, Me Mecklenburg is so it's super easy to play. You just spam HE and everything. You can use AP on cruisers. Um, you can you can spam HE. You can pen it. You can use AP. Like you can literally shoot AP at a battleship and. If you hit the superstructure, do like 15k from like 20 kilometers away. As, uh, the Mecklenburg has insanely good Sigma. Super good. 
super good sigma for how many guns it has the main issue is is that when you're shooting you're literally broadside so normally you know you can't be super aggressive in a mecklenburg normally and no you cannot build it you cannot build this ship secondaries okay i know some of you german elitists german engineering is best wants to build secondaries no do not build do not build secondaries on this ship. I have told so many people that, and I still see the damn things everywhere. No, you don't build secondaries. You build main guns. The damn thing has almost as much main guns as it does secondaries. <sighs> and Burgone, Burgone is actually, um, is still very strong to this day. Very strong um, battleship. Uh, has a nice reload boost, good HE, good AP, engine boost, very reliable, has decent anti-air for, uh, since it's a French battleship, has decent anti-air. Um, but it's very maneuverable, so um, pretty much the only weakness of it really is the fact that uh, it has a 32mm armor everywhere, so you're going to eat damage from literally everything. So, um, so there's that, but Burgone is still very strong to this day. It's, it's still very decent. People underestimate her, and you, you're done. You're dead. So, there's... So, cruisers. Um, This is going to come down to... Which, like... I'm really biased. I really don't like Plymouth. Like, I'm really, really biased here. I'm not a fan of the Plymouth. I'm really not. I'm not a fan of the Plymouth. Me, personally, I don't like the smoke radar gimmick on it. Like, I just, like... It pays a lot for its gimmick, uh, for the smoke radar. Um, and the fact is, is that any other 12 kilometer radar, you're, you're done. The moment that you get radared and they, and you were just shooting, you're just gonna, pfft, you're dead. It's like Belfast does it best because of tier seven. When you, if you're trying to do like a tier 10 Belfast, it's going to be suffering. But again, it's come, it's just me being a, a biased prick. I, I'm just not a fan of Plymouth and that's just, that's just my personal preference. Um, is it a bad ship? Um, off of like how it plays? No, I don't think it's bad. I just, I'm just not a big fan of it. So, there you go. Um, Stalingrad, uh, pfft. as I said earlier, it has some of the best, uh, cruiser guns in the game. It can easily dev strike any cruiser in the game if it shows a broadside and you hit their citadel. It uh it it can just you know it can even dev strike battleships. Um uh I've seen a Stalingrad um all like do like an 80k 80k um damage to a Kremlin in ranked. Um a Kremlin gave Stalingrad full broadside and just <laughs> dead. Which was nice. It was nice. How does Plymouth compare to Edgar? Uh pfft. It would depend on the player's skill, but Edgar would normally win. Edgar would win. It would depend. It all depends on player's skill, but the Edgar would normally win. Normally, Edgar is just ridiculous. Edgar is ridiculous. I love it. It's just it's it's literally a super minnow, and that's what it is, and, I, and that's why I like it. It's a super minnow with actual decent torpedo range. And that's why I love it. Um, Austin, so there's a saw and there's the Plymouth. Now, the Austin, the Amis, the Austin, I'm going to say, is a higher skill level ship. Um, you guys have seen how I play it. I legit don't engage anything. Uh, it's weird. I, I, I know I play it wrong, but how I play it is I legit wait until I have my reload to do an engagement. And I'll wait for the perfect opportunity to use that funny button, and then I'll back off. And I'll wait. I'll go back in. Use funny button. Back off. I'll just wait for that reload cycle. Um, like if I have to shoot at a DD or something, I will. But normally, I try not to engage with the Austin because um, you'll just get Citadel. This you, you'll you'll just blow up. The thing is literally a giant Citadel. You're just you're you're dead if you're not if you're even remotely um being like if you're being careless with it. You're you're done. Like you're done, you're dead, instantly done, dead. So there's there's the Austin. Um, I enjoy it because of the funny gimmick. Um, 
also a decent anti which is always nice so it's always nice there now let's go to the dds uh ragnar um one of the uh, i don't want to say it's the best dd hunter in the game but it's definitely up there on levels of like it's competent level um for like competitive play it's definitely way up like up 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 way up there for its competitive play um you can also build it as a farming ship you don't have to play it as a dd hunter you can play it as a farming ship and you can literally harass people from like 15 kilometers away and they can barely even hit you while you're like it's just pure pure cancer is what that ship is pure unadulterated cancer to fight when it's a farming ship it's such a, it's such a small target from far away it's like ridiculous to kill it so um there's that there's that so those are the steel ships um i went over all of them so there's that uh de i don't really know if i want to go over doubloon ships because like there's so many doubloon ships man like have you guys realized just how many actual like doubloon ships there are in this game like i, I don't even i don't want to go through all these it would take me like 40 minutes just to go through them all like i have videos on most of these ships already so i don't think i need to i don't think i really need to cover all of them i have like a video on over 90 percent like 90 percent of the new ships that are out i have i have uh videos for them all right so let's go over uh let's go over some research bureau ships since you guys were talking about that um like, the Slava to me is a fun ship. Slava is a fun ship. It's not a competitive ship. It's a fun ship. It's great for randoms. I don't... It's not good for ranked, and it's not good for clan battles. Like, it's only a randoms fun ship. And that's how I see it. It's only a fun random ship. You're not, you're not going to be bringing a Slava into um, clan battles or rain and the main reason why is because of the fact that it's very squishy it's bow and aft it's not a super tanky ship um like the kremlin it doesn't have the same features so usually a competitive battleship has to have the qualities of being tanky and having decent guns if you don't if it doesn't have either of those if it only has one and not the other then it it, it can't play its role properly um the ohio is one of the most one of the more revered competitive ships currently for um, clan battles currently or pots. The Ohio's pretty prevalent there. Um, it's also seen in clan battles as well, from time to time. It's pretty competitive. It's pretty good. It has a night. It has a very good heal. Um, very high turret traverse, so it can easily rotate its guns to where it needs to shoot. So say it's looking at one flank, it can quickly turn its guns to the other flank with super ease. Um, that's like the main reason why it's recommended for that. It just has really good qualities to be able to switch location. It's, it's able to switch its aim quickly. It doesn't have that really long turret traverse of like a Yamato. Um, Gibraltar, but Gibraltar is the cruiser with an identity crisis. Um, the main reason for this is um you get a smoke you get a smoke and it has a larger concealment size for some reason so and it also has a very large um it um it has a very large uh smoke penalty fire very large like nine kilometers or something like that so like nine or nine nine kilometer conceal uh smoke fire concealment so if you're trying to smoke up and farm any dd that gets near you spotting you're done you're done like i i don't recommend gibraltar do i recommend the congress uh i still think it's a fun tier eight for randoms it saw some usage in clan battles but the sheer brewer quickly took over that whole meta so so yeah so Vesipool 
it's newer, like I find it a good a good random ship. Um it has a very small okay, so if you okay, so if you guys know that the strength of the Petra, right? Very small superstructure, very lowish to the water. It makes it very hard for DDs to damage it, right? It's very hard to do damage to a Petro, right? You guys know that, right? So, so Vesipool has the same thing, but it's a little higher out of the water. But it has that same really thin superstructure. So it makes it where farming DDs or farming cruisers is really hard for them to damage it. Unless they get like permafires. But it's very strong against HE. The Sevesipul is. So against the HE meta, the Sevesipul is stronger against it. Now, if you're showing broadside and you're not moving, of course you're going to get farmed. But if you're moving around and actively, like, angling away um, toward or away from, like, an HE thrower or you're, you're actively, like, moving around, it's going to be very hard for them to damage you besides, like, perma-firing you. Uh, stuff like that. Um, it does have a unique super long heal, so usually you would want to pop the heal at the beginning when you know you're going to take a lot of damage. You pop the heal early, and that's how I uh, normally play it, but again, it comes down to, like, personal preference, but normally it's how I would play it or how it is. It has a very small superstructure, so it makes it very hard for people to be able to farm you. And that's a really good trait for the size of the ship. So there, there's that. Um, the 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 gold Gobert Gobert. Um, the Gobert or Gobert or however you wanna say it or whatever you wanna say it or whatever you wanna do. Um, very high skill level ship. I don't usually like recommending it until unless you have a high skill level um because of the fact that you'll just get dev struck instantly if you don't know what you're doing um i do the john the roofless build which is pretty much pure open watering no like no concealment uh rudder build all that um you can do so much damage with it if you know what you're doing properly very hard to aim uh very it, it pretty much has dd guns on it so very long air times for long distance so um so yeah very high skill level ship now the druid uh druid can be fun <sighs> druid can be fun but I, I personally enjoy the daring more the daring has more ver uh, it's more versatile compared to a druid um, and how you can play it. And that's why I like the Druid. I like the Daring more than the Druid. Uh, so if you're, if you're wanting to get a Druid, just get a Daring. Um, and that's, that's literally it. So. Yeah. Oh, it's guns also get knocked out a shit ton. If you see how, like, th like these guns get knocked out so much, it's actually aggravating. Those guns get knocked out so many times, it's actually really stupid. Ugh. It's, it's it's really annoying uh vampire 2 you can do a lot of memes with the vampire 2 uh one of the most prevalent and well-known meme of course is the vampire 2 with the schlieffen meme where you have a vampire 2 smoking uh the schlieffen around pretty much giving the schlieffen free secondary farm while it's perm it's hidden inside the smoke so that's one of the Best, that's one of the best ways for people to have fun with the vampire. Um, vampire 2 also has a, a 5 kilometer hydro and the crawling smoke. So if you want to be a D hunter, you want to be a dick, you can pretty much just bully your way into a cap, smoke, and hydro and just crawl toward the enemy DD. And uh, yeah, you can't do anything about it. Um, so yeah, there's, there's the vampire 2. I don't really play it too much, so... Other than that, I don't really know too much more about the Vampire 2. So, yeah. Uh, Siegfried is by far one of the most accurate cruisers in the game. 
I gotta remember it's the right one. Uh, yes, the Sea Freak is by far one of the most accurate uh, cruisers in the game currently. Uh, very accurate, very tanky. Um, so you're mostly using AP with this thing, but um, it can devastate ships if you know if you're aiming properly. It can devastate them. Very, very accurate. Of course, you can use HE still. It does have the German HE, so if you want to use HE, you're more than welcome to. But normally, when I'm playing Siegfried, I'm mostly using AP because you can you can punish battleships, cruisers with the AP. Very strong in that regard. Um, it mostly has a bad reputation, mainly because when this ship was in testing, when this ship was originally in testing, it was either this ship or the Agir. But it was supposed to be a secondary ship. Um, this was a long time ago. And I've I've held a grudge against... I, I think it's a Sig Frigate, did. I was holding a grudge against this ship forever. Because during testing, um, this was back when you could actually show test ships on stream, playing them. This was like, a, this is how long ago it was. But um, I held a grudge against this ship forever because I played it during testing and I loved it. And then they changed it and I got, and I got so just pissed off about it. So I didn't really want to recommend it to anyone. Um, that's one of the reasons why I do not look or even play any test ships at all until they're in their final state. When they're in their final state, I will then play the ship and then get my opinion on how good or bad the ship is and i'll do whatever i need to do to make a video that's how i do my own analysis of like new ship i don't touch them at all until they're final once they're final i then will go and play them once they're in their final state because i don't want to have an unfair biased opinion of a ship that's why i refuse to play or talk about them or anything because i don't want to i don't want to have an unbi i don't want to have a unfair i don't want to have like a, a biased opinion on something early when it's most it's either going to change for the good or the bad and we don't know so i'd rather just not have an opinion on it until it's then out or finalized then um then I'm, i'll be I'm okay like whatever so there you go. That's why I'm usually against like talking about test ships because normally I don't um I don't want to just like I don't want to be biased at all in the final ship. Um <clears throat> and by far um the most fun ship in this in this in this research bureau list is by far the Apollo Emilio. We all know the great yellow Emilio memes that uh we have done here. Thanks for the 20 month sub plans for yeah yeah yeah. We all know of the great Paulo Emilio memes we've seen everywhere. We've seen them everywhere. My funny compilations I've had in many uh Yellow Emilio adventures. Uh yeah, I don't think I really need to explain that ship really too much, but you just it's a higher skill level ship to know exactly when to push. It's also very matchmaking dependent. Um, that's the main reason why the ship is difficult to play. Because you have to have a really specific matchmaking. Um, if you don't have the specific matchmaking, you are uh, you're screwed. <laughs> Put it simply, you're screwed. You're not, it's almost impossible for you to, to accurately like to get a good like to get like a good anything you're you're screwed I recommend the Grotagen 100% Grotagen I recommend um the Grotagen I, I recommend 100% it's such a fun ship 100% yeah Azuma is free XP yeah uh, Grotigan I recommend. I hi Hiata, I do not recommend. A gear, I will slightly recommend. And Azuma, I'll slightly recommend. Is the Alvaro a good boat? Uh, it's a hybrid. She's not worth the two mil. There's your... 
guide to every little literally every ship in the game besides um the balloon ships 